Hello everybody, this is 2021 Amy 2, problem number 14, a geometry problem. Here we go. A, B, C, a triangle, the circumcircle is given. O is the circumcenter. G is the um, centroid of this uh, triangle. I think it would be uh, common, it would make common sense to re remember that because G is the centroid and right now it's just hanging up there, it might be a good idea to draw a G and uh, let it intersect BC. Obviously, it is the median, right? At the midpoint M. And just for the record, how is O related to M? If you were to connect OM, uh, that would also be a 90 degree angle. All right. And uh, also, we know that AG measures twice GM because the centroid trisects the median. But okay, so we'll see if that's useful at all. Um, all right, so next we go ahead and draw the line tangent to the circumcircle of ABC at A. All right, so AX in that sense. And intersect that tangent line at A to the circumcircle with another line which is perpendicular to GO. GO is our Euler line, right? So let me see, how did they do that? Oh, OG and then a perpendicular to OG at G, so that would be XY, I suppose. Y, we are told, is the intersection of XG and BC. Does that make sense? So this is all given. Um, all right. And uh, then we are told that these three angles, ABC, which is this angle, measures 13K, apparently. Um, BCA measures 2K. The way the angles are drawn right now, it seems the picture is not up to scale. But I suppose the people, I mean, um, if this figure was actually given during the actual test, they wouldn't mislead us. So I assume this is the configuration that works, I suppose. And XOY measures uh, 17K. So this one, this angle is 17K. All right, so that's pretty much all we're given. The question is asking for the angle A. And, um, and yeah, so there's a couple of different ways to solve this. This problem is apparently by Evan Chan, another really nice problem. Um, one idea is just to do a pure angle chase. Um, because there's a tangency here at the point A, AX is tangent to the circumcircle. How can we recognize that that line is tangent to the circumcircle? Well, the idea is probably to draw OA and the fact that OA would be perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so there's a 90 degree angle there. But remembering that there's also another 90 degree angle over here at the vertex A, at the at the point A, I should say, where uh, angle OGX is also 90 degrees, that already gives us a cyclic quadrilateral XAGO, XAGO cyclic. I don't know if you guys can see another one, but there's another cyclic quadrilateral. Um, among others, I suppose, um, but it is OGYM. OGYM is also cyclic, right? I think that's clear as well because two opposite angles adding up to 180 degrees. Um, but now, the, if these are cyclic, okay, I think it's, again, common sense to go ahead and just draw these uh, circles, I mean, kind of uh, as much as we can. So that's the first one. And probably the second one looked like this, the, the radical axis of these circles being GO, right? Okay, there you go. So we have these two circles. At this step, uh, when you start thinking about the angle XOY, that's the one which is 17K, XOY, you can do a very, very simple angle chasing to establish that that angle is the same as AOM. Why? Because those two triangles happen to be similar, actually. So triangle, the claim is that triangle XOY is similar to triangle AOM. Um, for those of you who know your configurations, you know that when two circles, they intersect at two points like this, um, O happens to be the center of spiral similarity taking my to ax for instance so um but just quick angle chase is, is is straightforward as well so let me just show that this angle over here oh shoot okay wrong color choice all right let's draw pink color or something like that do you guys agree that angle gox sorry gxo i should say 
is clearly congruent to angle GAO, right? Why? Because uh, uh, this was a cyclic quadrilateral. But similarly, this angle over here, angle OYG, is equal to OMG, is congruent to that one as well. And that establishes this the, the similarity of these two triangles. Do you guys see that? Because, let me just write it out quickly, OXG, OX. G is congruent to OAG, angle OAG, by, okay, let's call this one 1 and 2, 1 and 2, all right, by 1, and similarly, um, OMG and angle OMG is congruent to angle OYG, OYG, um, because again, this time by, by 2, and Wait a second, if those angles are the same, that immediately uh, implies that these two triangles are sim similar by angle, angle, angle. But because now we have that these two triangles are similar, this implies, so our proof is complete, but this implies the third angles must be congruent as well. So angle XOY, which is an angle of interest for us, XOY is equal to congruent to angle AOM, AOM. All right, uh, that's that's pretty much it. So at this step, uh, it is just the remaining part is very straightforward uh, to check uh, uh, how to compute AOM. So uh, if you consider, if you focus on angle AOM, we notice that we can split it into two pieces. So we continue. Angle AOM is just angle AOB, AOB plus angle uh, MOB. MOB. Well, MOB is, uh, well, both angles are uh, straightforward, I suppose. But um, do you guys agree that AOB is two times angle C? Do you guys agree? Because AOB is a central angle, subtending minor arc AB, but that arc is also subtended by angle C, which is on the circle, so it has to be a half of the central angle. So therefore, AOB measures 4K plus angle MOB is half of angle COB, right, which is also a central angle. And because triangle COB is an isosceles triangle, MOB should measure half of COB. Do you guys agree? But but COB is a central angle subtending uh, arc BC, minor arc BC, which is subtended by angle A. Do you guys see that? So, uh, so as a result, angle A must be the same as angle BOM. So BOM must be A, basically. Angle BAC. Do you guys see that? And that's, that's pretty much it. So because we started with angle XOY, and which is uh, 17K. Do you guys agree? Let's write it out. So this is 17K. Um, is equal to 4K plus BAC. Wow. So from here, uh, we can find that angle BAC is just 13K, right? Therefore, angle BAC, which is just angle A, let me just write it like that, is equal to 13K. But now we know all three angles of our triangles. They are proportional in the ratio of 13, 2, and 13. So they add up to 26, 28. So 28K is equal to 180. Uh, let's just write it, right? So the angles A... B and C, they are related in the ratio of 13, uh, B is 13, and C is a 2. So therefore, we have that 13K plus 13K plus 2K is equal to 180 degrees, the angles of a triangle, internal angles. The question is asking for angle A, so 13K over 2, uh, I mean, um, just just the 13k basically so we have 26 28k is equal to 180 degrees so that would mean that k itself is 180 degrees uh, divided by 28 but likewise like we said uh, the question is asking for angle a which is 13 times that angle 13 times well 180 over 28 they are both divisible by 4 45 over 7 so multiply it with 45 over 7. I believe this thing comes out as 13 times 45. 
450 plus 135, which is uh, uh, 585, 585 all divided by 7. All right, so therefore the answer is probably um, 592, I suppose. So that's one way to finish this problem. There's an alternative way, which is also super cool, uh, based on configuration. Notice that we started with three angles, which are, all three of them are perpendicular. Remember this angle over here, the one uh, given in the problem statement, angle OGX, and also this one. This angle is also perpendicular. Notice that in the question, somehow the picture is kind of a little bit misleading because it seems X, O, M are collinear. I mean, but, but they are not necessarily, right? They are not. Um, but... You, you have three 90 degree angles along AGM, the line AGM. Do you guys see that? If you guys want, I have another picture. Uh, let's just uh, go over this one more time just for the fun of it. But it's kind of, uh, again, a, a question regarding configuration. So check this out. AG extended should have to meet BC at its midpoint because the centroid is on the on the median so we have a 90 degree angle here clearly there is a 90 degree angle here and tangency oops tangency implies there's another 90 degree angle here OAX so that's also a 90 degree angle now think about it we have the feet of those 90 degree angles AGM but AGM is clearly collinear because AGM is just the median so as a result it seems if we were and this is the nice part. If I were to extend the tangent at A and hit um, the, the extension of BC at this point T, so then, and I believe this is the official solution as well, um, then if you focus your attention on the triangle ATM, no, obviously not ATM, uh, I meant to say uh, XTY. So if you focus your attention on XTY, oops, there's a yellow piece here. Okay, sorry for that. Now think about it. We have this point O, and from this point O, we did drop three perpendiculars to the three sides of this yellow triangle XTY. Clearly, the, the feet of those perpendiculars to the three sides are collinear, but this is just the converse of Simpson line theorem, right? Simpson line theorem, let me just go ahead and write this, Simpson line, is this very convenient result, uh, which if uh, you pick any point on the circumcircle of a triangle ABC, so suppose that you have this triangle ABC, you pick any point on the circumcircle, let's say this point P, and you drop three perpendiculars, one, two, and then three. Uh, well, the third one will end up being on the extension, I suppose, right? And so this one, the third one, there you go. So then the claim is that these three points are collinear. And you can check my YouTube channel uh, uh, for a proof of this result, which is uh, very straightforward with uh, angle chasing. Okay, there you go. So those three are collinear. But then the converse statement is also true. So if you start with a random point uh, on the plane of triangle ABC, where after you drop three perpendiculars to the three sides of our triangle, if those points, these three points, the feet of the perpendiculars are collinear, then necessarily uh, if, if the feet are, uh, if feet of perpendiculars perpendiculars from P to sides of triangle ABC of triangle ABC are collinear then P is necessarily on the circumcircle of triangle ABC oops on the circumcircle of triangle ah oh, shoot okay on the circumcircle of triangle ABC Aha, but if it is, then our point in this case is the point O. It has to be on the circumcircle of X, Y, T. Now, uh, that will give us enough information for the angle chase that will follow next.
firstly, okay, let, let, let me put all the angles. So we know this is 13K, this is 2K. Now, uh, angle C on the circle, subtans minor arc AB, but because we have a tangency, do you guys agree that this is also 2K, right? TAB is also 2K, all right? So that's the first observation. Another observation, I suppose, uh, will be that this angle over here, what does it measure? Well, yeah, right? So you guys notice that this angle was 17K, remember? Now this angle, 17K, uh, uh, subtends major arc XY. But the, the blue angle at T point T subtends minor arc XY. So if this one is 17, this one must be 180 minus 17K, I should say. So if this one is 17K, this one should be 180 minus 17K, right? Now if you uh, focus your attention on this triangle, ABT, on this triangle we have two internal angles and their sum should be equal to the external angle, the 13K. So we end up with the following equation, 180 minus 17K plus 2K better be equal to 13K. Oops, there you go. Uh, so that gives us that 180 minus 15K is equal to 13. So 180 is equal to 28K. And yeah, again, uh, we are in the position where again, K is equal to 180 over 28. Uh, simplify by 4, uh, 45 over 7. So now once we know uh, K itself, how do we go ahead and measure also the angle A? So what does it uh, measure, uh, the angle A? Well, right, huh? Uh, so this is just uh, 180 minus 13K minus 2K, right? So angle A is just 180 degrees minus, well, 15K. Do you guys agree? So because the three internal angles inside triangle ABC, so 180, 180 degrees minus um, 15 uh, times K was 45 over 7. And indeed, uh, you can, um, again, using a similar um, approach, you can factor out, um, well, I guess there's a 15 or even the 45. You can factor out the 45 first and so on. I could have uh, factored out the 15 at very early on. But uh, if you do the algebra, that should also give you directly the same answer. 13 over 28 times 180 degrees. And you simplify it like we did earlier. And I think that simplifies to the same uh, answer. 585 over 7. All right, so um, I guess uh, this second solution is kind of, um, yeah, being able to make this uh, observation, this huge observation that related to Simpson line. The previous one is somewhat, uh, I, I, it felt to me more um, like, the, like the intended probably solution. Um, you see the 90 degree angles, you draw circumcircles, an angle chase following that. that. Uh, like I said, if you had some, if you've seen this configuration previously, uh, you would, um, yeah, so the configuration, I mean, the, the spiral similarity configuration where we have this triangle X, O, Y, this yellow triangle uh, being uh, con uh, similar to this triangle. Yeah, this is a very fruitful configuration. Um, yeah, so um, that's all I have for now for question number 14. I'll see you guys in our next uh, problem solving session.